Hi, and welcome everybody to the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Podcast. My name is Ross Benjamin. Like every Monday, I'm joined by Mr. Doug Upstone, one of the finest handicappers uh, there is in the country today. And uh, Doug's a, a uh, you can find Doug over at DocSports.com. Doug, how goes it? The uh, Ross, it it goes pretty good. Uh, we what do we uh, got a great week ahead of us. Um, got ten championship games in college football, uh, so, and a lot and you know a lot of things will happen in terms of potentially the playoffs, and of course you know having different conference champions, ten different conference conference champions, and let's not forget we got the the makeup game of Cal and USC. So, I mean, Ooh, who's not wait. looking forward to that? I just can't wait for that game. I, you know, it's, I mean, last week, that USC BYU game, I mean, there was literally hundreds of people there, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> forget no. thousands, it was hundreds. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, so no, no, but and, all kidding aside, no, it should be a fantastic week. Um, you know, a lot to talk about. Okay, yeah, from absolutely. That. I mean, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of great matchups. Um, nothing really, nothing really bad. No, not at all. Um, in some interesting scenarios, you know, in terms of if one team wins and the other team loses, who's yep. going to be in the part of the college football uh, playoff? It's basically an elimination game for Alabama this week against Georgia, because I cannot see, even if they lost the game in overtime, them moving a two, two loss team into the picture. Uh, although, what was the It happened a while ago with LSU and they ended up LSU, winning the championship. Yeah. That was yep. many moons ago. That was prior to this uh, college football uh, rating system. Um, anyway, Doug, any other interesting notes that caught your eye in college football or something you want to discuss in that regard? Yeah. Well, the, you know, I mean, the one that stands out is the uh, Big Ten game because, um, you know, many were surprised Michigan uh, even would compete, let alone win against Ohio State, and they dominated. So that was impressive. And then uh, Wisconsin folding like a tent at Minnesota to open the door for Iowa. Yeah. So, you know, so the, you know, the popular assumption is going to be, especially with Michigan, you know, double digit favorite over Iowa, it's going to be to take Iowa, you know, because, uh, you know, you have the, you know, a team that plays tremendous defense, uh, getting that many points. There's no way in the world that Michigan can even come close to replicating the emotion that they had from last Saturday. Um, I will just play devil's advocate in this way, though. OK, I, I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't take Iowa, but the difference in the offensive talent between the two teams is just ex it's tremendous. I mean, Iowa really struggles to, to move the ball against better competition. I mean, you know, the, I mean, I, I, the only way they beat Nebraska last week, it was because it was Nebraska. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, they just <laughs> invent ways to lose. You know what, Doug? Three and nine this year, all nine losses by eight points or fewer. I, I mean, remarkable. I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, you can say they're snake bit, but they're, they're not. Okay. Yeah. They just. They just they just find a way to lose, and so so and Iowa creates creates a lot of their own you know their defense creates a lot yes. of their own turnovers and you know changes games and you know put gets them positive field position. Uh, I'm just not I'm not all in saying that you know what Iowa is a play. Okay, I guess that's more. What do you think? Well, I think if you look at how both teams have played down the stretch, uh, cast aside even that Ohio State game. Michigan has been the far better team in the second half of the season. Uh, in terms of what you just alluded to, yes, Iowa is one of the best defensive teams, not only in the Big Ten, but in the country. But, you know, Michigan's not too bad on that side of the ball. And in my opinion, Michigan is the more complete team. Now, the, uh, the one doubt is, uh, like you touched upon as well, Doug, uh, that how uh, mentally prepared, how many mentally ready will Michigan be to play this game? I can't imagine with the opportunity to be part of the 14 playoff and winning a national championship uh, that uh, they will have a problem with emotion. Um, I know that it's a tough ask to match the emotion they had last week, but I really don't think it, the difference between beating Ohio State 
in Iowa at this point of the season is night and day, Doug. You know what I mean? So right. I, they really don't have to be at a pitch level like they were last week. They just have to play good fundamental uh, football. If they don't beat themselves with takeaways or uh, giveaways, I should say, uh, they should have an excellent opportunity to not only win this game, but cover it as well. So there you have it. Uh, again, we got to see the uh, line movement on this game as the week progresses. Don't forget, folks, we are taping on Monday, and uh, these games aren't till later in the week. And speaking of our free picks, Doug, we went 4-0 and last week. As, uh, the one question well, I know that people are going to question me, I had Oklahoma State in college football, but, you know, like I always say, folks, we grade these picks on a weekly basis, uh, whatever the line was at the time of us recording. And last week when we recorded, Oklahoma State was a three-and-a-half-point favorite. They won by four. Sometimes those types of situations work for us, and sometimes they work against us. This time it worked for us. And, Doug, uh, you were on Western Kentucky, which was a great call. They just absolutely hammered Marshall. And then in the NFL, Doug, we had Denver. I, I gave out Denver, and you gave out Green Bay. So no qualms there. There's no question marks there. Though That was two dominating wins. So good job, my friend. Same to you. You know, the uh, the other thing, too, about, you know, you mentioned about Michigan and Iowa is, you know, Michigan, besides the emotion uh, of aspect of the game, is that they actually, I mean, they're not a lock, you know. I, I think they're going to be number two. Yeah. But if they would happen to lose this game, I think they could fall out with another loss. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. You know, and especially if Oklahoma State wins, yeah. uh, Notre Dame sitting on the fence, Cincinnati wins, uh, Alabama loses. I, you know, I don't think they're a lock. So they, you know, they have to play. You know, it is. It's not just like showing up. I mean, no. for example. Georgia can show up. Georgia's going to the playoffs. Okay. Yes. But no, they have bigger ambitions, but you know, still they're in. I don't think Michigan's a lock. So if they don't bring it, at least to a certain level, even if it's 25, 24, they win. As long as they win, they're good. Yeah. The only lock about Michigan in that game, in my opinion, is if they lose the route. Yeah. I, I don't, I just, again, similar to the Alabama scenario, how could you put a two team our two lost team in the 14 playoffs this season, which such, uh, it seems like six, six, seven teams have been bunched up uh, going. It could go either way for any one of them going down the stretch. So I think uh, common sense will prevail, Doug, and uh, we'll leave the politics out of it. And if you, if you have two losses, you're out. And there's a reason why I say that because, Jim Delaney in the Big Ten always seems to have a stronger word than everybody else. That's just my opinion. Don't forget, folks, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please take a second to do so. It costs you absolutely nothing. And you have the luxury of what you saw last week, a 4 and all sweep with our free picks. Doug, you have a free pick for us in college football on the Sun Belt Championship game on Friday night, and I can't wait to hear it. Actually, it's for us. That game's actually going to be on Saturday afternoon. Okay. Sorry, Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no problem. That's the ESPN. That's the you're thinking Conference USA. Yes, I that's, that's what, what I was thinking. thinking. Thank yep, you. Yep. So, and on that one, so we have a rematch of this year and the two previous Sun Belt championships, Appalachian State and Louisiana. Uh, for the last year's game was canceled, so that's why you know there was the Sun Belt was canceled, so that why the uh, that game was not played. Now Appalachian State has won the two previous uh, championships since they uh, instituted having a title game back in 2018 and 19, and both of those games were in Booth, Boone, North Carolina, which is their home. That's where they knocked off Louisiana. Uh, then this year they played each other and they went into the Deep South, down to Lafayette and the Raging Cajuns, who. I guess to me, they seem to like lose after they lost to Texas. They just, you know, they were seemed disinterested. And, you know, they were only, I think, one in four, to stay, even though a four and one record, they were only one in four in their yes. first five games. Yeah. And then they played Appalachian State. 
and they were thoroughly inspired and destroyed them. 41 to 13 as four and a half point home, uh, home underdogs. Now, App State had four turnovers in that game, uh, but they were outgained by 244 yards. So they were thoroughly outplayed. Now, the line has moved to Louisiana at plus three, even though they're still, again, at home. And you know what? A strong case could be made for Appalachian State because they are better on offense. They are better on defense. And they have the revenge angle coming into this one. But I've seen this Louisiana team play enough uh, it, over the last several years. And this is a senior laden team that has, they've won four straight division uh, championships. They are a proud unit. Their coach is going to be leaving to take the Florida job. But if you know anything about Billy Napier, that Florida job will start Monday. It doesn't start Saturday and it doesn't start this week. He's all in for his seniors to want to get a championship with this group. So I think this team is going to come ready to play. I think they're going to be hyped up with, with the home crowd. And I also found the system, okay, that I'll just share with everybody at the same time, is that home teams that have won three or more consecutive uh, games straight up facing an opponent that has won five or more consecutive uh, games straight up, the the, the the home team in this case is 24 and eight against the number. I'm going to take Louisiana plus the three to win the Sunbelt, Sunbelt Championship outright. Yes, uh, that's a nice pick. Again, Doug has a uh, stellar track record over the years, not only in college football and the NFL, but in all sports across the board, even the one that's played on ice, even though he lives in 100 degree temperatures on a daily basis. Go figure. He melts the ice. What can I tell you? Anyway, uh, I have a free pick in the um, Big 12 championship game. This looks like a very intriguing matchup. Talk about implications. Baylor's a two-loss team. Look, no shot for the uh, college football playoff. Oklahoma State, on the other hand, what a surprise, right? 11-1, um, and one, and they're sitting on a doorstep. Doug, if anybody uh, fails, if Alabama loses, um, you know, one other team, let me see, Alabama, there's another team that's involved that's in the, the mix there, that if they lose, they're in the conference championship game as well. Help me out, Doug. Number three and number four. Well, uh, hey, we got, we got, well Alabama and well, Cincinnati as well. Yes, know, okay. Any of those, you know. If, yes, if Cincinnati's play, playing Houston. That's no gimme. So, no. You know, anyway, make a long story short, I'm going to look at the total in this game, which is 47. Doug, you got two of the best defenses, not only in the Big 12, but in the country. And uh, statistically speaking, Oklahoma State, number three in total defense, number one in sacks, number one in third down defense, holding opponents to a conversion rate of 24.7%. When I heard that on the game Saturday, uh, I couldn't believe it. And then I had to look it up for myself. And number five in scoring at 16.4 points per game. Baylor, on the other hand, not too bad himself. Number 17 in scoring at 19.4 points per game. Uh, over the last three games, the Baylor Bears have allowed just 16 points in 303 yards per game. Um, and all three of those games went under the total. That's the last three Baylor games all going under with a combined average of only 40.7 points scored per game. These teams met earlier this season, and Oklahoma State uh, prevailed 24 to 14, much to my chagrin at that time. But my point is that game stayed well under the total, and also uh, Oklahoma State held Baylor to a season-low 280 yards in that contest. I think you know where I'm going with this, folks. I'm going Baylor, Oklahoma State under the total of 47. That's Baylor, Oklahoma State under the total of 47. Oklahoma State looked so good last week, Doug, that the Oklahoma coach, Lincoln Riley, says, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I can't believe I lost to Oklahoma State. The, uh, no, well, the, 
you know, that was a tremendous game, by the way. Uh, yes. You know, and, and really went back and forth, and, and it was it was a fun and entertaining game. But yeah, I, I well, the I you know Lincoln Riley, I think that he, he sees the writing on the wall for what's going to happen with Oklahoma, and I think he can more control his own personal destiny by going to USC. And you know, th there's still a lot of assets there, and uh, and he, as it turns out, he's also bringing some new assets that had si had signed up to go to Oklahoma that are you know really top flight players that are going to end up going to USC. So his rebuilding process will uh, it, it probably come along a little quicker than maybe some people would think. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. I, you know, the US, USC is a pretty, uh, obviously it's an elite job as well. Oklahoma, we'll see what they end up with. They haven't always hired the best coaches as we've seen thinking of John Blake is one name that comes to mind yeah, yeah. right off the top. So, you know, we'll, so we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. Yeah. Um a lot of interesting scenarios and I'm sure we're not done seeing the uh, coaching oh, no. swivel go. Um, you know, the other one that we talked about is uh, the job at USC, uh, which was, we just talked about just now, but the other job too, the LSU job is going to be open uh, with, with uh, Ed Oregon uh, going elsewhere or, or just resigning or whatever you want to put it that way. I think he yeah, resigned. <laughs> yeah, let go. I mean, so I'm trying to be polite here. Anyway, Doug, any other further uh, comments? How about what you got going on this week? Well, with college football, obviously, we've got lots of championship games. And, you know, I have had a winning record each of the last two years in conference championship games. So I'm going to try and make it three years in a row. And so those my selections will be available at Doc Sports. That's the Doug Upstone page at Doc Sports. And we'll try and do it up again, Ross. Sounds good. You can find Doug again at DocSports.com. Uh, Docs is one of the longest uh, tenured sports handicapping services in the nation. And uh, there's a reason for that. You know, longevity to me speaks volumes. A lot of great handicappers over at DocSports.com. You can find me at RBWins.com. Folks, I told you I was going to turn things around. Uh, four and one in college football on Saturday. Uh, that makes me uh, 18 and six the last four Saturdays in college football. Overall run of 22 and nine in college football. By the way, too, folks, how about a five and one day in the NFL yesterday? So uh, things are looking good. I'm getting red hot. And you know, uh, Doug, when you get hot and you feel it, you want people to get on, on the ground floor, not wait till you're up to 52 and 21. Get in when it's 22 and nine. There's a lot of money to be made. And uh, uh, surely uh, you can make some money with me and Doug Upstone. So until the next time, folks, for Doug and Ross, we like to wish each and every one of you all the very best.